Hello everyone and welcome to WASP 101. I'm Andrea Rossi, the developer of WASP. In the previous tutorials we have been learning different techniques to create various kinds of fields starting from different types of geometry. We've seen how to start from curves, how to start from surfaces, how to start from volumes. In this tutorial I want to kind of look at all of this together and look at how we can take different fields generated in different ways and combine their values in order to create a composite field that will allow us to have more detailed control over the geometry. To explore the combination of uh, different fields and different techniques to generate those fields, we are going to start from the same file that we used in tutorial number 8 on surface fields. If you remember, what this file included was uh, an aggregation resembling some sort of an urban agglomeration which was growing following a surface. Now we managed to have the aggregation following the surface however we have just a little not enough control on this so what all we can do is we can make sure that this blocks grow along the surface but we don't have any other parameter which we can use to control them. In this tutorial what we're going to be doing is we're going to be introducing two more parameters to control the growth of this uh, aggregation and these two parameters will be first uh, a distance from some curves which we're going to imagine being some sort of roads which we're going to be using to attract the uh, the housing blocks to grow along that curve and the second is going to be the slope of the terrain which we're going to be using to repel housing when the slope is very high and to allow uh, higher housing growth when the uh, slope is very low and so when we are in flat areas. Let's get started. Uh, if you download the work file that you can find in the description below, uh, you will find that uh, you already have the built aggregation that we built in the example file number 8. If you follow the example file number 8, you can also go on and catch your file for that. This is exactly the same. And so what we have is we have uh, a base surface here which is the one that we see here with the level curves already done and we created a field from that which is based on the distance which ensures that everything that is below is zero and what's above has a higher value as it's closer to the surface and in this way we got this growing aggregation. Now what we want to do is we want to bring this curves that you can find up here bring them in, project them on the surface and consider them some sort of a road which we can use to drive the growth of our aggregation along them. Let's go on and get started to do this. We're gonna move below our fields component and we're gonna create a curve component. Right click, set multiple curves and select all our curves up here, there are three and right click to accept. Once we imported our curves we also we want to also go and catch our points which come out of our field points component here and so to bring them down we are going to create a point component connect it so that we can get all our fields and we're going to drag it down here. Now what we want to do is we want to first of all calculate the distance of each of those points from those curves. No, sorry. First we want to uh, project our curves on that and then calculate the distance. To project them we also need to get our uh, geometry and we have our geometry up here in the field so we can just get that, Control c Control v and bring it down. So here so we have our curves, our base surface, which you cannot really see, and our points. To make a bit easier to work, we can go on and for now right, like select and hide all our aggregation. And for now I'm going to also turn off the preview of my points. Okay, so I have my curves, I have my geometry. We're going to right click and bring up project. We're going to get the one here with the with the little surface. And so the curves we want to project are our curves. The B reps on which we want to project them are is our surface and the di direction is by default already on Z so we are projecting vertically. And here we go. Here we go and we have our curve projected on our surface. 
Now that we have these curves, we can use a pull point component where we're going to plug our points into point and our curves into geometry. And what we're going to do is we're going to get all the points projected along these curves, as you can see here, but also we're going to get the distance from each of those points. Nope. A little error, we have to right click on the geometry and flatten. Okay, and now it's going to find us the closest. So you see, now we have all my our points. So what we want to do again, if we want to create a field based on that, we want to remap these values. So we're going to get remap numbers. We are going to connect our values. To find the limits of this, we are going to use a bounds. Connect that, connect this. And now as we want to attract our points, we want to have a field that will have really high points along these curves and really low points when we are far away. Which means that we have to invert our field. And so we're going to create a panel which is going to be contain 1, 2, 0. So when the distance is very low, we are going to have very high values. And now, as always, when we're working with fields, we want to create a graph mapper in order to control the transition a bit better. I'm going to bring a Bezier and leave it on default for now. And now the first thing we want to do is we want to check what we've done. So I could go and copy this panel here that we have in our, where we have our gradient and our view. In our preview, so we're gonna bring it down and I'm gonna replace the output of my graph mapper in the T. If now I'm gonna activate the preview, you see what we created. We created a field that has very high values following these curves that run along the surface. If we wanna have like a bit less of a spread, what we can do is we can go and change our graph a little bit. If you want to do it quicker, you can double click, change it, and then recompute. Okay, great. Now, we could use this uh, value directly into our field, and we would get a field that would follow that, but what we would also lose, we would lose all the information that is stored in the other field, which is the distance from the surface and the fact that we shouldn't grow below that. If we want to instead maintain both the information that we get from these curves as well as the information that we get from this field, which is instead the distance from the surface and the, uh, making sure that it doesn't go below, what we can do is we can take both values and multiply them. So you can realize that if we multiply these values, whenever one of the two values will be zero, the other one will be zero as well. So we will ensure that nothing grows below the surface and areas where we have our curves, they will have a higher values than areas where, which are far from our curve. So we are going to be concentrating our growth on the surface, but pushing it more towards the roads. We can do that by creating a multiplication component and connecting the output of weave from our first field and the output of our graph mapper. And you now go on once again and copy paste this and connect now the output of our multiplication and hide this one. You see what we have. We have a field in which effectively everything is zero and values are much higher along the curves next to the surface. If we now get the output of our multiplication, bring it up and connect it to our field and then come down and hide our points for now. If we now come up and reset our aggregation and visualize our aggregation by activating this, we see that we're effectively creating an aggregation that follows those curves. And if I go on and grab a point and change a bit the curves, it's gonna take a moment.
when I go and reset my aggregation, this aggregation gets adapted to follow the new curves I've given. So we saw that we took the information from two fields and by using some simple math we have been integrating them. Now let's try to do one step further and add a third layer of information. This third layer will be the uh, slope of the surface. To calculate the slope of the surface we need to bring with us once again our geometry which we have here and our points. So let's copy paste them a bit lower. And so what we want to do is we want to calculate what's the inclination of the surface at every point in space. And we're going to do by first of all finding the closest point on the surface from each of our points. So we're going to connect our points in P and our surface in S. And this is going to return us the closest point but also the UVs of those points. And we can then use those UVs to do an evaluate surface where we connect our surface and our UV. And this is going to return us not only the point but also the normal. And we can use that normal to effectively calculate that angle. How can we do that? We can do that by simply creating an angle component and calculate the angle that exists between the vertical, so the z-axis, and the normal of the surface. So we're going to create a z-axis, unit z, connect it to A, and then we're going to connect our normal n to B. And this is going to return us an angle that will tell us what's the inclination of the surface at that stage. We can go on and, as always, remap these values. And once again, here as well, we want to remap them inverted. So we're going to remap from 1 to 0. Because what we want to do is that when this angle is very small, so when the normal is almost equal to the, to the vector z, that means that we are in an area where the, uh, where the land is mostly flat. And that means that it's going to be an area where it's going to be better to grow. Now, I know that's not like the best definition of an inclination of a terrain. There could be better options, but this is one that is simple enough and fits our purpose for now. Now, if we want to visualize a little bit what we did, we can once again create a gradient. Where we're going to connect the out of our remap to T. And then we're going to get a custom preview. But this time we're going to connect not the points that come from our field, but our closest points, just to see what happens. So you see what's happening. We have very high values whenever the terrain is flat and the terrain is very close, like the orientation is very close to the Z, and we have much higher values whenever the terrain starts to uh, become more inclined. Okay? So we have our values. Like this is a more gradient, uh, a more graded transition, and we're going to just skip it that way. So let's not increase it. And if we want to, we're going to reduce it. And if we want to see what's the impact, we could get this one, the output of this remap, bring it up and plug it in our multiplication instead of our roads. Now I'm going to hide everything because it's going to create a bit of a mess. And if I now go up and reset my aggregation, you can see that now my growth is entirely pushed in all the flat areas of my, uh, of my aggregation. So it still stays close to the surface and it grows whenever the, the surface is flat. Now what happens if I come down and I zoom into my multiplication, I can actually add an extra input when I can integrate from the graph mapper also my road values. We can visualize the gradient here 
And we see that we start creating a gradient that is much more complex and takes into account both the distance from the road as well as the flatness of the surface as well as the distance from the surface. We can then go on, right click to reset. And now we see that we have effectively a combination of these elements. So our blocks start growing mostly in areas where the thing is flat, but they also tend to try to follow the, the curves as well as try to follow the surfaces. And so you see that what we are able to do with this approach is we are able to create much more complex aggregations and also adding by adding more information on our fields we are able to implement more and more control on our aggregations and so have more parameters uh, driving our aggregation and so create more interesting and more effective results. So that's it for what I wanted to show you in this tutorial. I hope it was clear. If there's questions as always let me know in the comments. I'm gonna answer as quick as possible. If you want to keep updated with our videos subscribe and like the video. We are going to be continuing to release more videos and thanks for watching and bye.